Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be covering 21 useful tips in regards to PvP in Darker and Darker. These tips can apply to solo, duo, and trios. If you feel like you have some super important information new players could use, but I don't cover it here in this video, please leave a comment down below explaining what your advice is. But anyway, let's get right to it then. So, tip number one. Default kits can win fights, and practice makes perfect when using them. Because at the end of the day, gear isn't always everything. It's super important in this game, but I just want to let you know that the default kit is not what is holding you back ultimately. The default kit only up to a certain point is when it is holding you back. I've done extremely well before with default kits on many classes. So don't let the default kit discourage you from practicing with it because it can help you in the long run being really good with what you start with when you have nothing to begin with. Number two, try to balance patience with aggression. Too much of one or the other can lead to an unnecessary death. So for example, if you wait too long to attack a player, they could heal, gain better gear, or assume a more advantageous position. And on the opposite side, if you're too aggressive, the player could already be on high alert or overprepared for a fight. So just make sure that when you spot a player and you know a fight is about to happen, make sure that you find out if you need to be more patient or if you need to be aggressive. This is eventually a skill that you will come to learn and you'll know what choice to make the more experience you get. Tip number three, never walk around with missing HP if you can help it. Use physical healing items such as potions, bandages, surgical kits, campfires. Use magical healing items such as spells or abilities. Resting on its own can be absolutely necessary sometimes, especially if it means that your survival is going to be the outcome from resting. This also prevents you from being taken by surprise if ambushed. So always make sure that you're keeping your HP as high as you possibly can. Tip number four, always try to maintain having a light source. This will allow you to see in places that have been intentionally made dark or are otherwise dark naturally. Sometimes it's better to have a throwable light source to avoid being attacked while holding said light source or while attempting to light the dungeon light sources themselves. So it's always good to just have a, a lantern, a torch, anything works. That way, if something is dark, you're able to see. Tip number five, speed and defense are both viable playstyles. One isn't necessarily better than the other in most cases. And in my opinion, play what feels better, not what others say is best or meta. I personally prefer to play more of a speed play style with some of my characters, but some people prefer to go pure defense, and that's totally okay. Number six, when playing a class that uses projectiles, such as throwables, spells, arrows, take your time in landing hits for multiple reasons. Reason number one is to avoid doing damage to your team members if you have any. Reason number two is to avoid wasting any ammo or items by just endlessly being aggressive with them. And reason number three is to obviously guarantee better shot placements or thrown weapon placements for more damage. I've seen a lot of players be extremely aggressive when it comes to their projectiles. It's a really bad habit to build up, so try to avoid doing that. Tip number seven. Use audio and visual cues to better understand your surroundings. Frequently try to stop and listen to what is happening around you. Uh, the game becomes more easily heard when you start to do this. Look for open chests, doors, items on the floor, mob or player bodies, anything that shows signs of player activity. Once one visual cl uh, clue is found, you typically can follow a trail of player evidence that leads to them. Now, that doesn't necessarily say that you need to follow them, but you can at least know where the player's general direction is based on visual clues alone. 
Tip number eight, play to your class's strengths. This isn't meant to be a class guide by any means, but I'll just go ahead and give a rundown of each class and in my opinion of what they do best along with some of their cons. So obviously do some research on your own. But for example, fighters are slow and defensive, meaning range can be less problematic when pushing in, but they can be easily outspaced by melee players very easily. Barbarians are bursty and aggressive, meaning they can pursue people easily in melee, but they struggle heavily against range damage. Rogues can do very high DPS, but are otherwise fragile and typically reliant on ambushing players. Frontlining as a rogue is typically not ideal. Rangers can do very high amounts of consistent damage, but tend to be easily killed if they're jumped. Always be aware of your surroundings as a ranger. Wizards have a high amount of burst damage, but are extremely fragile. If you're called out in melee on a wizard, you are potentially dead in this case. Clerics have some of the best sustain and defense in the game aside from fighters, but are heavily reliant on their spells, making them vulnerable during spellcasting. Bards produce many of the buffs in the game and are sometimes vital to groups, but when they have instruments out they can easily be killed, so positioning is key here. And finally, Warlocks have some of the highest short-term sustain in the game, but their spells cost HP, and their curses are all hit scan and short range with the exception of their Hellfire. Warlocks are usually at their weakest when casting spells. Tip number 9. If you have the ability to destroy doors, sometimes leaving them undestroyed is the better option. You can trap players with them, and when they're opening them, you can then break them to surprise them. This can also allow you to escape if needed more easily. If you break the door down, you can't exactly close it behind you, can you, to cut them off? Tip number 10. Check the ground for hunting traps, especially if you've sighted a ranger. You should always check the ground for traps in general, but hunting traps especially can be bad if a ranger is nearby. Don't let yourself get caught in a ranger trap, because it can be very infuriating. So save yourself the headache, and make sure you're always looking out for those traps. Tip number 11, aim for the head. It does more damage. It should be obvious, but I'll say it. It won't always be possible, but make a habit of aiming for the head. It will give you more damage. It'll make killing mobs easier. It'll make killing players easier. Aim for the head. Tip number 12, baiting players and feigning being weak or hurt is a very legitimate strategy. Sometimes pretending to run away or acting like you're hurt can be a way to make other players be reckless and quote see red. So it can be very advantageous to make players think that you are fleeing from them to make them be more aggressive. That way you can easily kill them because you already know they're just going to hold W and hold left mouse button or whatever they might be using on their class. Tip number 13. Crouch spamming and befriending enemy players. Trusting players is entirely a case by case thing in my opinion, but I found trusting players to not kill you usually leads to them killing you when you're at your weakest. The best way to deal with this is to never show hesitation or any kind of weakness if a player is trying to befriend you. Either crouch spam back at them or stare at them. Trust me, it does work. Tip number 14. VoIP can be used to save yourself or to trick others. All's fair in the dungeon, I say. If you need to plead for your life, try it. Some players may begin to hesitate or outright stop upon hearing your cries for mercy, giving you the opportunity to either run away or to attack them to finish them off. You could also see on the opposite end of the spectrum to use VoIP to befriend and trick players to allow you an easier kill. Will you feel bad about it later? Maybe. Maybe not, but do what you need to to survive in the dungeon. Tip number 15. Setting up ambushes and traps is a legitimate strategy. For example, leaving a pile of items somewhere in the open whilst you hide right next to it behind a wall or somewhere else close by is an easy way to lure someone in and attack them. Sometimes you'll have to play dirty if you want to live in the dungeons. People are going to do it to you, so why shouldn't you do it to them? Tip number 16. 
Running away isn't always bad, but make sure if you plan to, that you know you can get away. Sometimes you might get into a fight that you can't win, and the better option is to run rather than die trying to edge out a win in an unwinnable situation. Make the enemy players work for the kill rather than giving it to them. Don't feel bad about running away. Sometimes you can use this to trick the player to then turn around and smack them in the head. It's very effective. Tip number 17. Baiting out enemy abilities and spells is very effective. So I have three examples of this. So example number one is baiting out a barbarian's rage. As soon as you hear them rage and you see them rage, be ready to run. And the easiest way to do this is to get near them. And once you hear them shout, run away until you know their rage is ended. Then choose to attack them. This makes them exceptionally easier to deal with. The second example is forcing a cleric to think you're about to fight them and watching them buff up fully only for you to avoid them. This not only wastes their time, but it also wastes their spells, which they could have a limited amount of. The final good example is making a fighter use their sprint or second wind, then disengaging from the fight entirely. Try to reserve your own abilities in these instances unless using them keeps you alive. Baiting out abilities is something I do frequently in PvP, and I see extreme success in doing it, so I highly recommend to always make sure that you're not blowing all of your abilities, and instead you're baiting out the abilities of your enemy, and then using your own to secure the kill. Tip number 18. Invisibility pots are insanely good. Don't sell them. You can use these to hide from other players or to set up an ambush. If you've watched any of my PvP videos, you actually will see me frequently use invisibility pots or sometimes see clips after me coming out of invisibility. I get a lot of people this way. It can also be used to secure yourself and make sure that you're safe. Sometimes if you're playing in trios and your team members are dead, an invisibility pot can help you avoid another enemy team from ganking you. So make sure you keep them, always take them in with you, never sell them. Tip number 19. Jumping during fights can sometimes make it harder for the enemy to hit you in the head, but use this cautiously as it does slow you down. Tip number 20. Watch other players PvP. This might seem a little self-explanatory, but it is really beneficial to watch other players who are already experienced with the game so you can learn the mannerisms that they expose to you either through their videos or streams or clips and you can learn something super small all the way to something big and then carry it over into your own gameplay. You can also see what they do in search, uh, certain situations that you've been in before and see how they answer to the problem as opposed to how you do it. Tip number 21 and this is the final tip and just like my last beginner guide video involving PvE my final tip is to always have fun. If you're getting frustrated with players killing you, take a break from the game. When you try to play this game frustrated, you're not going to have fun and you're not going to be able to learn to get better. Frustration and dark and darker, they don't mix well. I have basically adopted a very good mindset when I play dark and darker. I don't get upset at the game anymore. I don't let the game upset me. Um, so it's just really about approaching it with a different mindset. Try to keep a positive attitude as that is the key to getting better at this game and enjoying it overall. And that guys is my 21 tips for PVP. I appreciate all of the support you guys have been giving me and thank you for watching. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, consider checking out the rest of the channel and joining my discord server. I'll be leaving a comment down below with all of my social links, so feel free to give them a look as well. I appreciate all of the support you guys are giving me, and as always, thank you for watching.